Hello, Rupa here from Crafters Corner. Yes, I'm back after the festivities, a small break. I hope you all had a good one. Today is going to be a video tutorial on how to antique any prod product at home, meaning any box or uh, ceramic ware, plastic, anything, just about anything. How do you give it an antique finish? So here is a, a ceramic vase, which after being antiqued, became like this so this is the effect we are trying to achieve today and i have another surprise at the end of the video all this possible with the new range of cadence products available at crafters corner so for this project today what we would need is chalky paints of course the very very chalky paints from cadence my shades for today are french linen french linen and October mist, yes. French linen and October mist. It's got a grayish kind of tone, gray brown tones. Okay. And the master blasters for today are the Dora metallic paint. Yes. The Dora metallic paint is, what can I say, is um, absolutely gorgeous, amazing to work with, wide range of colors. You name it, you can work on any surface with this. So I have done on a um, ceramic vase. I have done on uh, MDF boxes. I have done on plastic too. And of course, glass. It works on any surface. So that's the vers versatility of this product. And look at the range of colors. I have four colors with me. Uh, one is antique gold. The other is a silver gold. And then I have uh, green. And the last but not the least is a pink. Yeah, it's not pink. It's called dried rose. Yes. So these are the lovely metallic shades that I have with me, which is going to give us the antique look to the project. For this particular project, which I have done, I have used only one tone, which is uh, the silver gold. However, the other one that I'm doing, I'm going to show you a mixed uh, uh, range of colors, metallic paints that can be used. And of course, the look of the antique is not possible without the sea sponge yes this sea sponge is also from uh, kedans i'm sure you all would have used the cut and dry sponge look at this the cut and dry sponge to apply gesso over uh, bottles and other projects and you know the kind of texture that comes from this one right but there's a whole world of difference when you use a sea sponge to give texture so you'll be seeing that that's what gives the antique look along with the metallic paint so let's get started let's jump in not to waste any time yes sea sponge chalk paints and the metallic paints there we go let's get started so i have this uh, ceramic vase another twin to the one that i have okay um, yes it did have a little chip here and there so i put some air dry clay and look at the wear and tear yeah it's been used as a vase hosing uh, plants and flowers for quite some time I, I guess this should be easily 15 years old picked up on a roadside well yes time to give it a makeover and make it even more antique so this is kind of glazed and i don't know um, rough actually so i don't have to scrape much it's already okay so like i said this doesn't need much of sanding because it's already a very old piece it's not too glazed or anything so what i'm going to do is i have a plastic sheet with me i'm going to scoop out these shades which is October mist. This one is, I think, October mist. Yeah. So I'm going to take out, scoop out October mist. Here's October mist. And I'm going to chalk out some French linen. Look at how chalky these paints are. You have to see it. Really thick. Look at that. Okay, I think that should do. So, I'm going to take the cut and dry sponge. Yes, still not time for the sea sponge to come in. And I'm going to dab the chalk paints here. Randomly, I'm just going to work with these two shades. There's no blending. Just want the entire vase to be covered with these two tones just one coat just look at the coverage let's see here 
this is just one coat so I'm covering the vase let me finish this okay so I've covered the vase pretty much with both the tones okay so there's no major blending or anything just used both the tones randomly it's not even dry just before it gets dry what I want to do is I've just picked up some uh, black acrylic paint and I want to randomly dab this black acrylic paint also when this is wet okay let it not look very spotty so you need to just blend on looks scary at the moment but that's how it is when black chips in it's always a little okay so you go about when the base color is a little wet the blending is easy just in case your chalk paint has dried before you bring in the top coat or where you want to blend just dampen the sponge which you're using for application and that should uh, take care of blending so here in in this case i'm not doing that because my paint is still wet mind you this is just one coat of chalk paint and i'm coming over this with a little black acrylic paint if you have black chalk paint you could do that with that too so it doesn't matter so basically trying to darken the tone here in spots here and there okay so here is the pot the vase rather uh, yeah looks a little scary at the moment this is work in progress mind you so the black acrylic paint has also dried it is patchy here and there dark tones somewhere it's blended well it just doesn't matter because all this is going to add to the antique look now comes the main job to antique this whole thing with metallic paints your choice of metallic paints you can choose just the gold or work with gold and a little rose or green okay so I'm going to progress with various shades today looks good okay so here's the sea sponge mind you this effect is very different if you're going to try with the cut and dry sponge sea sponge gives you a better impact uh, you need to just soak it in water and then make it soft otherwise it's a little hard look at the pores in this you have to see it look at the pores this is what gives you the texture okay there you go my secret revealed yes previous was had all these colors okay so I've squeezed it out it's just damp now i've squeezed out all the excess water now what you need to do is work on layers of these metallic paints and let's start with the lighter color i'm going to start with let's pour all of them here look at that nice and creamy so i'm going to, okay so that's silver gold for you and what happens is just dip the sponge in the paint okay and then see the texture that unfolds okay this is totally different from any other sponge so now I'm layering it with go randomly this is silver gold for you You don't need to paint with it you just need to dab it with the sea sponge here and there okay you can see even the texture on the plastic sheet here so it can be a little dark and light effect that you want to give so I'm first doing with the silver gold and then I will progress to the next color
and this dries very quickly mind you because we're taking very little and then uh, dabbing it with a sponge so basically creating textures with this randomly so i think that's the first color loaded on of curves and crevices in this vase. Okay, so that's the first color loaded on here. I'm going to move on to the antique gold next. Okay. I'm going to be careful pouring this. Where are you? So, a little bit of antique gold here, slightly darker tone, you can see the difference between the silver gold and the antique gold, okay, I'm using the same sponge, I'm not cleaning it, okay, here and there. How much do you dab is another question that's totally up to you how antique you want this project to look it's totally dependent on that nevertheless if you think you've gone a little overboard on the metallic shades you can always come back with the paints the chalk paint and the black acrylic you can do a bit of dry brushing if you think the metallic tones have gone too much right now this looks antique with just the gold. You could leave it this way if you are happy with just the gold tones. Sorry again. Okay, so I have done the uh, silver gold and the antique gold. I am coming to the green now. I think I'll dab on a bit of green and then decide how metallic this is and whether it needs a bit of black touch again. So a random dab of green. Same. I'm just going randomly. Probably would give a bit of a different antique look other than the regular silver and gold. The green adds up, giving it an even more intense look. You will see it at the end. So I am just randomly dabbing, not concentrating on any area as such, basically. Just go about it. One thing good about this metallic paint is not, it's, it's not too much on the face kind of shine. You have to see it. Meaning I can go about on this in the video, but then you have to really use it to see the difference i mean it's it's so fine and subtle look at the finish here it's almost dry i mean i'm just rubbing my hands and still there's no paint coming over me so that's the kind of finish here okay where's the other one here's the older one with just the gold and this is with a touch of green here mild green here i think this is fairly antiqued though um Maybe I would go over it with a little black or so. Where is the old sponge? Okay. So I have the old color here with me. The paints here. Is it wet to work? I guess so. I think I can just add a little bit of black paint. The metallic shades are overpowering. Like in some spots here and there. I'm just going to dab the black. vase was more on the browner tones okay so because i had used sandy brown chalk paint as i had mentioned earlier and a bit of brown acrylic paint whereas this one on the other hand is all about it's all black blacks and grays okay so okay so i forgot the bottom rim yeah so dabbing a little bit of the green and then going back again 
black here and there. Okay. Looks good to me. I don't know how the camera is picking it up. So like I said, yeah, there's a difference between black and ticking and the gold brown, those kind of shades. Okay. So that's pretty much it. I'll take some pictures and show you in the end. This is how it looks at the moment. I'm quite happy with how the antique look is in here. If you see, you can see some prints here. I have done some stamping too. I will do that. And then before that, I want to show you something else. I wanted to show you how this paint takes on to plastic things. So I have these... Uh, plastic animals with me you can see these small little animals i'm going to show you one of these this is plastic okay i'm going to paint and show you how this looks okay so let me grab a brush here and then first go on it with the antique brown this is directly on it okay I've not used any chalk paint, no gesso, nothing. This is directly on the plastic. I'm going over with antique gold. I'm covering it fully with that. Okay. Let me show you what I did with this. I had colored another hen in the similar manner, a plastic hen. I'll show you what happened to it in just a bit. So that's anti-gold. Let me rub in what all green I have from this sheet. Okay. Okay, so that's rubbing on a little bit of that. Why not try a bit of the rose? Let's okay, there's a little bit of the rose color. A dabbed effect gives a little different kind of a look than just brushing it on. Okay. Just to the antique finish i'm just going to do a bit of dry brushing here with black subtle not too much okay so here is how it looks okay with the metallic paint on like i said it's not too bright there's a little shimmer and uh, i forgot to mention that these paints take on very well to wood also so maybe another day we will do an experiment with wood so today it's all about ceramics and are you ready for the reveal i'm going to show you something here is another antique bottle i know this you will not be able to see much this is a glass bottle, okay, so I have decoupaged the tissue onto it and then worked on with the same tones, okay. This also has the rose, the dry rose, metallic paint, you can see the greens, hints, there's a little bit of the decoupage done, okay. And there is antique gold and silver gold and here is the little bird on top, okay, so that's how antique finish looks with the metallic paints and the chalk paints so go ahead grab them from crafters corner and start giving things a metallic antique priceless look yes that's more important how much money we spend on buying antique stuff now you can grab stuff at home and then give them just the antique finish with lovely shades don't restrict yourself just to golds and silver try the rose and the green it gives a very very different vintage kind of you know antique look i'm i'm totally in love with 
the rose dry rose here i'm not a very pink person but this rose in particular with the antique finish looks really good i'm going to show you some pictures at the end do have a look at them and if you have any doubts on the use of these metallic paints let me know i'm going to complete this vase also with some stamping okay and then you will see some pictures in the end if you like this tutorial give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe i'll be back soon with more tutorials Bye-bye.